Here we go. Welcome, everyone. This is the Jenkins Governance Board meeting. It's November the 14th, 2022. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Topics that we've got on the agenda for today include news, ideas, action items, elections, CDF topics, and forum and community topics. Are there any other topics that need to be added to the agenda? Let's see whether I'm able to document easy CLA until we reach the topic. Okay, all right. Okay, let's see. And I need to make a quick note so that I've got list of who's here, et cetera. Bruno, Basel, Gavin, Suresh, Oleg. Great, so brief notes, okay. In terms of news, any items that people want to highlight? Oh. Uh, I just added it, but 2.361.4 just is either being released or is released. I don't know the tense of that. Mm -hmm. um, Good, yes. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just thinking more news, but I'll wait till you finish whatever you're doing because I don't know anything about it. Oh, oh, so it was with a fix for a, an issue that was blocking a large, some large deployments some large scale use of, of Jenkins at, uh, at high visibility customers, at high visibility users. So thanks to, to Basel for leading that and to Tim Jacome and um, Alex Brandes for making sure that it happened all the way to the end. I, I haven't double checked the release checklist, but I know that Tim created the release checklist and I've seen the, the re release change log and upgrade guide appear on Jenkins.io as expected. I figure if it's not out right now, by the time this gets posted, it'll be out. So. Exactly, certainly. Yeah, good point. So 2.375.1 is the next LTS baseline uh, scheduled to release November 30th, 2022. Any any others that news that other people would like to highlight? Okay, then let's take on the next topic. Gavin, I believe you had added this, and thanks for doing it. Um, so the first, these were ideas on how to make I think ideas how to make the governance meeting more effective. And one was set up the empty agenda for the next meeting at the end of the previous meeting. And I agree with that one. That, let's just put that one as a mark weight action item. Uh, yeah, just, to... just the empty one so that we can add topics before to an hour before the next one type thing. Exactly. I think that makes sense. Good. Okay. Very good. Uh, the next one is something probably longer term, but as I'm working on building web components and building out the, the header, I noticed, and actually all the issues with the operator, I've been noticing that there's uh, two two sections, two lists of subprojects, and they, they don't match up, and a lot of them are not really valid anymore. Um, so like like the menu drop down here doesn't list blue ocean but the page does list blue ocean and whether or not we want to call blue ocean a sub project and then things like jenkins x uh actually yep. jenkins x is not on there but i was thinking it should be under the cdf now because it's it's pretty much unrelated to jenkins these days other than by name um so things like that i think we should uh this is i think a board topic because things whether or not they're an actual official project or not also i don't really understand the difference between a sub project and a sig so i thought we should kind of organize that a bit yeah so uh, i had it on my long-term wish list um, before i went to a kind of sabbatical uh, but yeah, I can explain the status. So for sub projects page, basically this page is generated manually. So for six landing page, it's generated automatically. I wrote it uh, in XAML when I was in Hamel when I was uh, preparing that. But projects uh, remained uh, manual, and uh, one of the reasons was because uh, somebody wanted uh, to show uh, blue ocean highlights, etc. That page. 
um, despite the alphabetical order. Uh, but uh, what we can do at the moment, my suggestion would be, Gavin is right, we should remove it. Uh, but I would suggest to just uh, create um, another listing for archived projects and put them there. So basically retain all the links, maybe add a header that uh, this project is archived, keep the content uh, and remove it from the listing. I like that. That feels like a good, a good, a good way to approach it. So, mm -hmm. create a you said an archive projects list. That way, we retain the links. Yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, there was a separate part a difference between the sub projects and six. So I guess we discussed it at one of the contributor summits. Uh, for me, in practice, uh, there is no difference. So I would rather squash them uh, into a single list at the moment. We Six discussed that. Uh, yeah, we have never implemented that. I'm not exactly looking forward uh, to implementing any code with our struct these days. Uh, but yeah, in principle, it would make sense to complete it. But uh, I think it should be completed along with archiving an active six as well, because many yeah. six, like cloud native one. I'm not sure about the status of platform seek. It's definitely around, but uh, Platform, do platform think... seek is very active. Yeah. But, uh, but it's yeah. your your point is well taken. Cloud native sig, uh, pipeline authoring sig. There are several that are on the list that are uh, Chinese localization. From what I know, is also inactive. Right. Yeah. I can exactly. only ask Rick, but um, from what I know, they wanted to move to the CDF level. The CDF level didn't exactly play the ball, so I was uh, the sponsor. We started it, but then uh, there was no meeting organized by SIG organizers in over two months. So we kind of archived uh, this effort as that an arrival. Uh, but uh, yeah, so why would archive it in Jenkins too? Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I, I like the idea of archive. Again, it's not a destruction. It's rather a moving it into a separate status, right? That says, hey, yeah. if someone wants to bring this back, we're ready to bring it back. Yeah, so for Cloud Native Seek, I would definitely like to keep the content because, yeah, the pluggable storage discussion keeps happening every month or so. Mm -hmm. um, so I would appreciate if you could keep these links even if we archive the Seek. Right. I like that. Okay. Um, I'd also really like to get rid of the Chinese site because it's really out of date. It's, it hasn't been updated in at least 2019, if not 2018. And to me, that's worse than having a partially translated site. But so, uh, should we send a notice to Rick? I'm not going to lead that charge, so I don't care what happens. It's one of those things I'd like to see fixed. No, okay, it's so... okay. I well, that can feels like uh, a... send a notice to Rick. Okay. So I guess uh, no one would object. The question is how we archive it. So what exactly it constitutes. Because, for example, we can uh, remove this redirect, which has been a pain for quite a while. Uh, but whether we should keep hosting it. Because from what I remember, we still host the site from our infrastructure. I, I don't know, because there's so much of that SIG that's been self-hosted in weird ways. I think we, we maintain it and we host it. But I don't know. It's just, it's a It's a confusing mess. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure we may uh, host it. At least um, I was participating in the discussions together with Olivier when we were rolling it yeah. out. Yeah. Um, but to go back, because there was a message in chat about what does removing Jenkins operator mean. Uh, I was proposing when I wrote this up, this, uh, higher up, Mark. Um, higher up, okay. Uh, to remove it from the sub projects list, because I don't feel like Jenkins operator is a sub project. It was something that was, people were like, yeah, let's make it a sub project. And then it's always been in its own isolated environment, which is kind of what a sub project seems to be. But at the yeah. same time, I, I don't really want to advertise it because it's a support nightmare right now, because no one's answering questions and it does things on its own and it's using old versions of Jenkins now. So again, these are not so much I'm saying get rid of the project, but I don't want to advertise it anymore. 
Yeah. Mm, so my only advice would be to send uh, the notice to maintainers before it happens. It can uh, be done, for example, through the issue list or through the email. I, I've created issues and no one's responding. I've, okay, then people, uh, people are on on the Slack and no one's responding. So I, I agree with this shouldn't be done in, in isolation, but I'm very, yeah, very uh, frustrated for by the, the operator. Shop, uh, I confirm that they're not responsive too much at the moment. So I, I have one question, like, uh, I mean, since we are actually using Jenkins operator in our infrastructure, so uh, I think uh, we are going to be having another uh, next release, right? Maybe in month of December or January, something like that. Do you have any details around it? Mm -hmm. Veracode is not responding and they have pretty much insisted that they're the only people, I'm oh, sorry, is it Virtuous Lab? Uh, yes, they've, yes. they've insisted that they're the only people that touch this operator. We had a uh, volunteer and trying to engage with the operator in the past and they're like, no, we want to take control. And then they disappear for a year and then the issue gets raised again and then a fight happens and then they're so i'm very biased against mm. this i don't i don't like this group right now yeah they're... so just to share some context context so you remember there was a, a drama between two operators one is virtuschlap one another yep. one is red hat one yeah so basically when uh, we gave a trademark usage approval for jenkins operator and for virtuschlap a part of the discussion was that we introduce open governance for the project. And at that point, uh, uh, the maintainers were open to that. If the situation changed afterwards, uh, then... Uh, I don't know, the I haven't been involved. Open governance was uh, kind of confirmed. Yes, uh, then, uh, well... I burn out, then I left CloudBees, so I didn't uh, follow up on that. But uh, uh, for me, uh, there was a confirmation that we proceed with open governance for this project with representatives from three entities. So Virtuschlab, one of uh, the vendors, potentially Red Hat, um, and one of uh, Jenkins Governance Board representatives. Yeah, the only thing I can speak to is that Slack, apparently I I don't even know I don't I don't join Slacks, but apparently their Slack is is quiet dead, and they're not responding on the forums and they're not responding to GitHub issues. So I don't. Uh, know. There is another explanation for that, because I do not know how operator is organized, but then they spin out uh, the enterprise service, so basically this appear operator SaaS on, on Asia and managed to a separate startup. So maybe they just forgot to, to move community somewhere. Maybe, but to me, that yeah, makes, uh, makes us well, look really, really bad. You know, people yeah. are coming in saying, hey, this doesn't work. We're like, yep, we can't do anything about it, right? So either someone from the active community takes over from the project or they start responding or something but right now the, the key thing for me is i don't want it listed i don't want a dead project listed on the site because it makes us look bad okay so the question is is it dead or is it looking for new maintainers because i opened the repository last commit today is june 29th so five months since now yeah i don't know uh, if you because if you actually look into the history of the religious uh, i'm thinking like uh, uh, like in another maybe December or January, there might be some other release. And Suresh, um, Suresh, are you with Virtus Labs or what's what's? I, I'm interested in that. I'm just curious what your insight is that would hint that there would be an upcoming release. Um, basically, I'm actually just started, uh, you know, working on uh, creating uh, Jenkins using uh, Jenkins operator. So they're like, uh, I'm exploring this um, Jenkins operator actually, yeah. Okay, but you're, you're a user, not a, you're not, not with Virtus Labs or with Red Hat. Yes. Okay, yes. thank you, great, all right. Mm -hmm. I do know there's issues with Java, with them and Java 11, which is how this came up, right? Yeah. So I, I agree, I think there's a new, I feel like I've seen somewhere that someone mentioned there might be a new release with new Jenkins coming out soon, but I can't remember where I saw it. 
Yeah. Honestly, I could have dreamt it for all I know. Okay. So my proposal, uh, yeah, I see your issues, Gavin. I see there is no response. So my proposal would be to explicitly uh, say, uh, extend the maintainer list. Uh, I can uh, um, probably create this issue as a board member because we had uh, these conversations. I can uh, pull up uh, the meeting notes. But for me, the suggestion the strategy uh, would be to basically encourage adoption of this project, not to kill it. Yeah, I don't necessarily want to kill it, but I don't think it should be a subproject. Right. Well, so, if nobody maintains it, we archive it. Yeah. If somebody, someone steps up and takes over the maintenance, or when we, if we're just up because I'm active, then it's a separate story. Yeah. My yeah. this this whole subject is about whether or not we want subprojects and not whether or not we want Jenkins operator. Yeah, but I th I think Oleg's got a valid point that it's worth considering the whole the whole expand the whole thing, not just the. I, I agree, Jenkins operator as a subproject doesn't make sense. It's not active enough. Mm -hmm. Let's let's take that action immediately. Wholehearted agreement there. The the bigger question, if it's not adopted, archive then archive it. I think is worth carrying it forward into future board meetings for discussion to be sure, hey, what's this what's the status from Virtus Labs or others? Have we found someone to adopt it? Mm -hmm. I was looking at the list of projects and I see remoting and configuration as code listed as well. And that content on both of them is fairly out of date. For example, the Configuration as code sub project has some reference to a meeting that doesn't occur anymore. So, you know, one thing I could do is just migrate any content that still is relevant into their GitHub readme's, and then we could um, either archive those two pages or just redirect them to the GitHub readme where any remaining content would be left. Yeah, it's reasonable. Well, configuration is called, um, its development is not detected at the moment. Well, the core functionality is stable. There is, of course, a lot of uh, things uh, to happen, but, um, and for remoting, uh, I do not know. So basically, I guess it's a question to Basil whether I, uh, and to JC whether they want to maintain this page. Uh, yeah, I think but, the, there's a, there's already a lot of documentation in the GitHub README, so yeah, yeah. I don't see a reason to highlight it elsewhere. Um, I mean, it seems more like a marketing uh, thing to me to kind of highlight that repository on the subprojects page, but I don't think we have a, a real need to do that right now, and at least not any more than we would for any other Jenkins component like Stapler or, or anything else. Um, so basically, the whole point of projects remoting was to list all associated repositories, because it's not just remoting library, it's also distributions for agents uh, and uh, installer models, which are now plugins, actually. Uh, right? Uh, right. Uh, so, well, and since they're plugins, uh, that code is archived, so it uh, needs an update. Uh, but um, yeah, it could be cleaned up. I still think it makes sense to have it somewhere, this listing. Yes, it could be, yeah, we could just keep it there, but uh, uh, first thing I would kill is uh, remoting Gitter chat because uh, it's a reference from the page. I just opened it. Uh, there was a question in August, obviously nobody answered to that. Uh, so I think that we should just uh, pull the plug uh, on the things that do not work. Yeah, any meetings that no longer occur, sorry, any meetings that no longer occur or uh, mailing lists that are no longer monitored and replied to, I would not want to keep. But I, I, I see your point about listing all of the repositories in that in that space in some kind of list. You know, that, that list has slowly gone down a lot because now it's just uh, remoting itself 
and a handful of other repositories mm -hmm. for the Docker images that that package remoting. So it's a small number now. There used, like you said, there used to be many more with the modules, and I think that list could live uh, in the respective readmes of, of each repository. I mean, they could all just refer to the others if there's only two or three of them. Yeah, might be. So I don't feel strong the way to put this content. I definitely agree with you that we should remove the content that is no longer relevant. And basically, when I was introducing metadata for mailing lists, for chats, the idea was to facilitate discussions for particular areas. Well, and to some extent it worked, but uh, now since uh, uh, the, uh, many, cha many channels are no longer active, we just need to uh, clean them up. Um, on that note, um, if I think, well, okay. So a hypothetical um, infra proposal I wanna make is to spin up a, um, a Jenkins matrix server um, purely for namespacing. Um, I'm, I got a couple ideas and a bit of research and I wanna reach out to a vendor for it. But the idea of matrix actually has a concept of spaces which would look, look essentially like Discord or uh, Slack workspaces. And I'll write up a full um, proposal on it. So Mark, if you want to just like write a, a high level stuff and I'll write a proposal later. Okay. But the idea is that we could, you could tell people to join a um, Jenkins space and that'll list all the channels. You can see what's active. You can see it's kind of like what Gitter has, but a little bit more control, a little bit more that we have managed to right now. Gitter is kind of a free form. Um, so I'm going to look into that. I'm still, you know, looking at options and stuff like that before I'm making a full proposal. But the idea is I want to make sure that, you know, our chat rooms are very clear, which ones are active, which ones are not, where they're active, how they're active, that kind of thing. Because we have, you know, some projects having um gitter chat room some having slack some having irc and it's a mess and it's confusing and it's hard to find and hard to trace and i kind of just want to finish cleaning that up so um i do intend to write up a an info proposal pretty soon but just haven't got to it yet i have been doing a bit more research well we created chapters uh, for sub projects um, on community the jenkins that i own yeah so I would argue that uh, most of communications in the community are supposed to be asynchronous. So yeah. using discourse for them is perfectly fine. Yeah. And uh, we can just close Gitter, uh, IRC or whatever, and redirect people to discourse where relevant and to create matrix charts or whatever charts only for the cases where there is a real time discussion between contributors. Uh, collaborating on the things. Yeah, I don't think the uh, contributors end up needing real time chat. I think they're quite happy using uh, GitHub and PRs and stuff like that. It's the yeah, support uh, that wants the real time chat. Well, we don't provide support in the community. So if someone wants to provide a support for a new company in the rolling crowd, they're welcome to go ahead. But I don't think that uh, we should create chats just for fake notion uh, that uh, um, we provide some kind of support. I wasn't, it would I wasn't make sense that. for support of contributors. Let's say, uh, so in Captain, for example, we had a help contributing uh, channel, uh, which might make sense to have as a chat, but uh, I don't think that it's in the scope for this Canva. All I want to do is make sure that all of our stuff is in one spot that we can reference. I'm not suggesting creating new chats. In fact, I want to shut down mm -hmm. more chats, but I don't want them in the current state where like one is on Slack, one is on Discord, one is on Gitter, one is on Matrix, and you have to go to each sub project to find out which one's active in which spot. And all. I just want to have one spot listed, easy to maintain, easy to uh, monitor, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. so. I think we have discourse for that. So, yeah, so by default, I would take this course. That's, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're, uh, it's a uniform belief, though. Some people yeah, like certainly. async, some people don't. Right. I, I find I find the chat channels actually quite helpful on occasion for, for quick conversations, but valid point that so gavin you'll bring a you'll bring a pro, you'll bring a proposal yep. there you're evaluating it further yep Great. getting some ideas 
Uh, I actually, it turns out I have uh, a connection to the actual creator of Matrix, so I've been asking him questions. So yeah, I'm going to write a proposal pretty soon. Great. All right. So did I say that correctly? Considering yeah. a matrix name hosted namespace. Okay, great. Excellent. All right. Anything else on on the sub projects topic or am I still let's see. No, we've still got more. So GSOC twenty twenty projects. I think again those that was just already... list that was listed under sub projects on that page. Okay, so th this this, just... this is all you can, you might want to move that one you just put in out of this section because this oh, is all just oh, about it. right. Got it. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, put it here. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And again, so, like we have infrastructure and GSOC as a project, and we have them as SIGs. So I was like, I don't know if we want both. Yeah. So so this one, I the Google Summer of Code, where we've already started the preparations for 2023. Yeah. Uh, John Mark is is thinking about that, and I, I like it being under sub projects here. What was your concern about having it there? I think that should be renamed to SIGs and put SIGs there. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. I'm okay. saying don't have them as SIGs and subprojects. I see. Yeah, so if we squash them, uh, then uh, it won't be a problem anymore. I see. Okay, so instead of calling it subprojects here, we conceptually could say this is SIGs or special interest groups mm -hmm. and then just list those here. Okay. Sure, or move all the SIGs to subprojects. I just don't want both. Got it. I see. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So maybe we should just we could just squash them to working groups, because I'm not uh, a big fan of how uh, uh, six organized now. Because uh, let's say the most of six being started now would be just temporary. So for yeah. example, uh, Java 19 uh, compatibility working group, which is a kind of under the umbrella of platform six in the current framework. But uh, mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine uh, starting a new long-term seek, which we, we would foresee to be happening, let's say, in a few years in the current state of the community. So maybe just uh, saying that projects, seeks, whatever, all of them are just working groups. Uh, whether they are advocacy or whether they're component-wise, nobody really cares. Right, okay. And we archive them uh, uh, as we want. And that'll help a lot with the, the newsletter as well. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so that feels like a reasonable proposal to me. I, I think now we've just got to figure out how to implement that. Andy, or so, let me ask So you. I'm, this whole topic, I mean, yes, I agree with the, you know, the concept of merging them into working group was literally Jenkins.io though. If you go back to the, the tab you just had open. Ah. Mark, uh, uh -huh. if you scroll down, scroll down literally here, you'll see j j uh, Summer of Code on this page, not in the yeah. menu, on this oh, page. Oh, not on the menu. Oh, yeah, okay. it's uh, my fault. This one starts talking about, oh, maybe I'm looking wrong. One of them was specifically talking about uh, 2020 projects. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that to me feels bad because it's 2020 and not, no, so this one's up to date. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Right? The, the problem was that this is all a bit of a mess. Like there were things right. that were talking about 2020 and things that were talking about 2022 and who was active and who wasn't. And all I was saying is that we need to clean this up and get it organized. Cause it, it when you talk about things that are two years old and not been updated since it feels mm. unmaintained. Right. So, but I do like uh, Oleg's comment of make, making more working groups. I think uh, that's a good one in general. Okay. All right. So, in terms of a, a specific action item, is it we we're, we've got an action item to uh, propose a transition to working groups and a restructure of the uh, Jenkins.io site to implement that? So, it would unify unify sub project the concept of sub projects and the concept of um, SIGs. Did I understand it correctly? Yeah. 
I'm sorry, I muted. Um, yeah, I, I think you got it right, Mark. I think that's what Mark and I were talking about. I would also like to just specifically say any if we're messing with the uh, nav bar, um, I want to be tagged in a PR because I'm trying to make web components for the nav bar and I want to make sure they stay in sync. Good. I'm getting very close. Uh, fighting with Argolia right now, but I'm very close. Oh, cool. All right. And I think the new, I made the, I mean, it's unrelated to this topic, but I've made the nav bar into a JSON block. So it should be a lot easier to add and remove things to the menu instead of trying to get that exact HTML right, because it's kind of hard. So. Very good. All right. So then does that, that then. We've yeah, the same one with infrastructure. I was confused why it was listed as both a uh, project and a, uh, a sig but it sounds like yeah the overlap right. isn't necessary uh it was a historical thing uh, so we had a disagreement with liam where it has to be because he had strong opinions about where particular bits of community governance go so finally i ended up creating boss <laughs> yeah uh, I, I think have never uh, seen much sense in that but i whatever. think working groups calling them working groups will help that a lot because uh, as you pointed out, a SIG is a long-term thing, and infra is always going to be a SIG, but there are working groups that come and go, and if we call them all working groups, some long-term, some not, that fixes that problem. Good. All right, so then I think anything else on the sub-projects topic? No, I'm sorry that I ended up taking half an hour. I thought this would be a quick chat. Uh, well, well, thanks for chat. bringing it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm and not you complaining. Brought, you brought I just wasn't the, expecting the, the right people in the room to actually have the conversation. Oleg knows history. I know some history. Well done. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, if I have some time this week, maybe I'll give it a bite and try to implement. No promises because I have exam in French on Saturday, but uh, yeah, let's see. Okay. All right. Next topic. Are we okay going on to next topic? I'll, this, this one should be relatively quickly. Uh, I just find every time I load the, the the Google Docs page, it takes forever to load and render. And I'm wondering if we want to archive the old stuff somewhere. Um, I'm not even sure what we want to do longer term because Mark's been putting them on the on discourse, which may be good enough for um, archiving. But yeah, good 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 point on discourse. So I followed the 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 pattern I've used with other SIGs. And I've created a, an archive called Archive 01 for December 2019 through September 22. And if no one, if there's no disagreement, I will remove so, the, the content that's already copied to Archive 01 from the master, from the central copy so that we get back to having decent load time. I don't yeah. want it in Google Docs. Oh, yeah, my uh, recommendation would be to export to Markdown. Yeah. Actually, now it's supported. So you can export and put somewhere on the repository, for example, Jenkins CI governance, we discussed a few times before. Okay, yeah. all right. So I, I would rather start to that repository and move it uh, there. I'm, I'm okay with the active notes being in docs. Um, I do think the collaboration tools in docs are still better than most other ones, um, but I don't want it long-term, um, especially because we just hit that with the meetings archive, we lost the meeting archive from in the past because one of the servers are shut down. So we should be making sure everything's in GitHub because if GitHub goes away, we're screwed anyways, but anything short of that, I think we're, you know, we're good and it's easy to move out of GitHub. It's not easy to move out of every other service. So I think so archiving should go into GitHub. Which archive did we lose? Uh, Meetings.jenkinsci.org. Uh, we don't I currently that have- we exported uh, that before. Yeah, no. It did exist on a server, but that server has been shut down when conference was shut down. So those files don't exist anymore. So they're trying to track down and find it and it's infra is on it. But yeah, so me, everything should be archived to GitHub like we do with the wiki and everything else. Okay. So uh, Yeah, I can check because uh, when uh, we were discussing it with Olivier, when we were moving the remaining mailing list, yeah. I'm pretty sure I asked to archive everything. It uh, but was I'm not archived. 100% sure what happened next. It yeah. was archived. It was just we didn't archive the machine it was archived to. Yeah, I might just have local backup. 
Yeah, um, I was. I said to reach out to you, and uh, Larry might have an actual snapshot of the machine. So yeah, that's a name for discussion that they should be handling, not me. I just saw it on IRC. Okay. Okay. So so just for my clarity, the preference is export it to Markdown and place it. You said I put it in GitHub. Yeah. Okay. GitHub is a big space. I would create a new repo under Jenkins Infra yeah. called Meeting oh. Archi uh, Archives and put all these in it. Put the ones that we lost on from Meeting site. I don't think they need to be on the Jenkins website. I think it's just going to be messy to put them there. Um, okay. But we can just store store the raw files somewhere. Okay. My that, recommendation okay. would be actually to create a repository for governance. Because remember something like one year ago, we were discussing having a kind of task list, uh, yeah. open task list, so that people could uh, contribute to governance. That well, now too. you can create a fancy dashboards, projects on GitHub. Uh, so we can, could just gradually consolidate uh, some of these runtime activities uh, on the governance repo. Okay. Also, for example, I could put, uh, for example, CDF uh, uh, governance updates on project status, the, et cetera, et cetera. So I think the repo would be beneficial. Ah, oh, good. All right. So, so and Jenkins Infra is okay then because it's really not code. Jenkins Infra is a reasonable organization so, for it. So my my distinction is if it's if end users are going to use it, it goes in Jenkins CI. If it's part of the Jenkins project, it goes in Infra. Or sorry, okay. it's used to host the Jenkins project. It goes in infra. I think that it rather goes to Jenkins CI uh, because I don't have strong opinions. Uh, well, it's the main part. It's more discoverable for contributions. Uh, plus, uh, if we ever decide to move topics like roadmap, etc., uh, it's beneficial for us to have it on Jenkins CI because uh, there is no way to migrate between uh, organizations on GitHub. Which is pain in the butt every time you try. Uh, so I would rather keep it in Jenkins CI right away. Yeah. No objections from me either way. Are you okay with it either way, Gavin? I I slightly think infra, but I don't have a strong opinion. Wherever it goes is fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Well, so oh. and and let's put the action in Mark discuss because with Damien. Uh, as part of the the meeting archive recovery, right? Because that that's a good a good place to say, hey, should I be placing more things there? Sig meeting notes, yeah. uh, Google Summer of Code meeting notes, all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. should and I don't mind doing the actual export. So, like, if you want to, when to talk to Damien and get it sorted out, I can separate each meeting into multiple files mm -hmm. and do like just like the previous meeting things was. Um, I don't mind doing that work. It's kind of put music on and get it done type thing. So, yeah. All right. So, what uh, other projects normally do, for example, in CF talks uh, and six, they create a repository for each entity and basically let them uh, control it as uh, they wish. But for example, in Jenkins, we already have six UX repository. Yeah. So maybe we could just uh, make it a kind of normal that all six, uh, well, working groups uh, and whatever, they have a separate repository for their content and manage them at the, that. They can also create a roadmap uh, in their uh, repository, uh, whatever they want. Okay. And actually, even GitHub discussions, if they dare to take GitHub discussions, but yeah. We can discuss it later, Kevin, because uh, I uh, do have some funny news for you, but it's a separate thing. I just don't want to have more silos of communication. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Fair enough. Anything else on meeting agenda truncation? Nope. Okay, next question was from Gavin. And this one, Gavin, this is a personal one for me. I, I'm, I'm more and more dismayed at the at the low quality of search that is affecting yeah. me personally and directly on yeah, it's getting worse. It's, getting worse. it's like I, I i now am reverting on occasions to search with google I know. using it's site colon jenkins.io and it's like oh that's really bad um 
I can't upgrade to the new UI. The new UI is nice, but all that's done by management in the dashboard that neither you nor I have access to. Uh, I'll reach out to Damien, but I think I'm going to get really aggressive with this because their support isn't responding, and they've always responded really quickly. So either we've annoyed them to the point where they don't want to deal with us or they're just going through something. But uh, I'm going to start going through social like networks and social media. I'm going to post on LinkedIn and be like, anyone I know at Golia that can help. I just wasn't sure if how comfortable we are with that because they are a sponsor. Yeah, I, I think, and I'm sorry that we've lost that. I, I fear that it may be me. I just can't find any indication in any of my email that I was the one who received that. that yeah, no, it could have it could have been like in a spam. It could have been in the flood of or one of the times you're on vacation. Who knows? It shouldn't have right. been just you anyways. So um, I'll chase. I mean, uh, I think it was Olivia and I, Olivier and I who set this up originally for plugins. So I should be on file anyways. Um, but I'll chase. I'll chase quite aggressively starting this week, because I want to switch to the new V3 UI for the nav the web components. Um, I do have V2 working, so it's not the end of the world if we don't get there. But it's it's so not good search right now. Right. And I think right. the UI changes have been making the indexing worse, which is fine. I I rather see the UI changes. Um, mm -hmm. But there was, it was uh, their doc search is based on like um, CSS selectors, and if we change the CSS selectors a bit, then their search went wrong. So I think we need to go and update that, and we can't update that without getting access to their crawler, which we don't have. In, so, well, and, and their current implementation, you know, they're not. They're certainly moving ahead with their product evolution, right? And if we stay yeah, no. behind, we're we're suffering by not yeah. not keeping. V three is it. great. It has yeah. a nice UI. It's very responsive, but we don't have access to it yet. So I'll chase them. I just didn't want to do anything that would make the project look bad by asking publicly. Yeah, I I think I think it's reasonable. Be be kind, but yeah. we, we really are, we're we we do need some help. And we're it's we're I'm I'm personally embarrassed that I have to ask for help on this one, but it's not going to get fixed unless we ask. Yeah, I'll take care of it. Thank you. All right. Anything else on the the topics we had there around ideas? No. Okay. Action items. Uh, community Jenkins I/O for Jenkins Docs list still not happened. Probably not until December at the earliest. You want to get Kevin to do it? Oh, that might be a good idea. Consider asking Kevin to help. Yeah, that's a good idea. Good um, suggestion. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Um, easy CLA for Oleg. Oleg, I assume, still in prog or still a uh, pending. I'm halfway through. Good. Congratulations. Uh, okay. Yeah. Actually, yeah, in um, November and December, I will have a bit more time uh, for Jenkins. At least uh, this what is my plan. Uh, but yeah, I will definitely start from catching up on some bits where I can help from the history. Because, Great. Yeah, that wasn't very available in the recent year or so. I still don't commit to be available much because I prioritize various kinds of volunteering uh, in anti-war campaigns, etc. Uh, but uh, yeah, I would like to spend at least some time to reduce my backlog. Great. Thank you. Last one, last action item open from previous was I have a, the action item to create a pull request documenting the web application server support policy. And I'm going to actually just call it policy because that's what we've called it for Linux and for Windows. It's our, our statement that, hey, we support and actively test Jetty. Uh, we we believe other web application servers will work if they support the correct versions of Java EE, but we don't test them. And we'll accept pull requests and happily accept people contributing if they want to become uh, contributors and want to write tests and write to submit pull requests. Okay. I did next. see I did see on the forums uh, people have started already saying that saying we don't support. I don't even know the names of any of them, but the web one. And even Tomcat, they're like, Tomcat should be supported. There are people who use it, but we don't know anything about it. 
And then people were able to look up Stack Overflow links a lot better because they knew that we weren't going to be able to help them. Mm -hmm. So it turns out uh, m more recent versions of Tomcat do Jenkins Home differently. And so people weren't catching that. And I think Tony even found out how to fix the crumbs issue, which I think Mark and I remember that went on like two months where someone kept saying it's broken and we're like, we don't, we can't help you without more details. And mm -hmm. you know, so apparently that has something to do with uh, uh, Catalina and how remote IPs are not passed into the thing. Anyways, it's someone found a Stack Overflow thing for it. So yeah. And then Tomcat, the newest Tomcat is probably going to break us. So yeah. we want to get this out before that gets out the door. So basically speaking, uh, our Java slash Windows slash web browser support terminology, we put uh, every, all the web containers to tier two, which literally means that we accept contributions, uh, but we don't actively test it. Yeah. At the same time, we do not deprecate. Uh, well, probably we could uh, move some known limitations uh, if, uh, to tier three. If we know something's broken, like flat out broken, we can say, hey, we're going to. I'm not aware it. of any. Right. So. I know that Jenkins uh, runs well on Wildfly, on Tomcat. Not anymore, uh, they don't. Well, uh, it's, isn't it based on Java EE version? I think Basel was the one who had guided me on this one, that if they're yeah, implementing so, the new spec, it doesn't work. Yeah, we are still on Java, Java EE, we are not on Jakarta. So right. the question is <laughs> what we actually want to maintain, plus there is a version of Java in question, because I would bet that uh, whatever works on Java 11 doesn't necessarily work on Java 17. Um, so yeah, right. So which which for me is is still part of of tier two, right? Tier one, Jetty and Windstone. The that con that container we test, we know it works. Well, uh, uh, Winston Jetty because oh, sorry, Winston uh, Jetty. So just to be clear, because yeah, there is Jetty. In theory, you can uh, launch external JT and uh, run Jenkins with it. Mm. Most likely it won't work exactly as you expect. Uh, so what I would say that uh, there is a bundle to web server, which you expected to use, uh, unless I don't know, <laughs> because uh, to, I, I to be honest, I see no, well, uh, there are some weird, uh, uh, corporate requirements like external permission manager, uh, external audit log, external SSO. But apart from that, uh, I wouldn't dare to even run a web container to these days. I can tell you right now that Wildfly and Tomcat have issues. They are fixable issues, but they have issues based on all the form topics we get. And yeah, having this page would be very surprised. nice to just be like, yo, you know, unfortunately, we don't support it. Uh, we open to anything that fixes things, but we're not going to test or maintain it. Right. Well, yeah. So for us, uh, we are still happy to accept pull requests that at least uh, these web containers work with default settings. But uh, many of our settings, many of our feature flags, so they are just designed for JT only. Right. Uh, so. Yep. Yeah, okay. someone. Someone filed a stapler issue about Wildfly, and as far as I could tell, um, the issue was the Java versus Jakarta imports. And I think the latest version of Wildfly is using the Jakarta imports, but earlier versions of Wildfly use the Java imports. So we, we would support earlier versions, but just not the latest one in theory. Yeah. Great. Okay, anything else on action items? No, we got 10 minutes for the hardest topic. Yes, let's get to the hardest topic and let's let's bring it. Okay, so elections is the challenging topic. Mm -hmm. So first, first, to first point, I guess maybe we need a timeline reminder. So nominations have closed uh, for uh, this year's elections, for elections. Uh, the nominees, I've sent the list of nominees yeah, thanks for that. Sent to the board. Um, Gavin and Oleg, are you okay if I share the, I put the, the list here because these people had uh, acknowledged that they were willing 
Tim, not time, Tim. Uh, are you okay if I share those who have not yet acknowledged, or would you rather I do that later? I'd rather you talk to those people before you share. Okay, them. good. Plus All right, one. so great. I, I will hold on those then. So the officer mm -hmm. nominees, right now, we have only one nominee in each of the officer positions. So this was a condition we had last year for most of the officer positions as well. And the answer is we don't need an election for those. So that's positive. Um, that's nice and simple. Board member nominees, we have nominees, uh, but need confirmation. And uh, we'll need that before the an announcement date of November 17 when we start the, when we start the voting. On Friday? Uh, correct. Thursday. So I can, and I'll take the action item. Mark, Mark, seek confirmation from the nominees. I mean, it should be the election committee, not you, but yeah. You, well, and I talked with Damien about that. Since since I'm actually not, uh, I guess Oleg and and uh, Gavin, to your que to the question to you. Since I'm not putting myself up for documentation officer this year. I'm actually not up for any nomination. Therefore, are you okay if I assist the election committee in that way? I don't have, I don't have a strong opinion. I just feel like the election committee should be doing the work. And so right now you're not part of the election committee. So if you want to join the election committee, that's different. But I think Damien should be the one reaching out or Kevin, even if he is nominated. Yeah. Yeah. And it's actually the election. Okay. Good, good point. So let me, let me ping back to them. Oleg, any comment from you? Mm, no, so I think that we basically also need to, to vet candidates on the board level. Okay. Uh, so at least that this is an expectation in the process so that it's uh, the entire board uh, makes vetting, not just the election committee. Mm -hmm. Well, the election committee will prepare the nominations and send them to the board. Right. That's the way I feel. Well, like it all already happened. Uh, well, Mark sent it. Yes. Uh, so we can. Yeah, but vetting the nominations is part of the, the governance project, which we I don't think we did last year, but we should have. Well, but there also wasn't very many candidates last year. So, yeah. So but we and I assume just for to be sure on project process, I assume we'll vet the nominees in the board mailing list. So it's done privately. Yeah, um, but that that's the place where we'll vet them and the goal is complete before voting Thursday. starts November before 17th. Thursday. So essentially yeah. tomorrow and the day after. Right. Okay. So so still we're we're sort of touching on easy things because the big challenge for me is this one. My proposal to change the change the rules and whoops, let's make it big enough to read. My proposal to change the rules is proposing to allow two elected board members from a single company rather than the current requirement, which is no majority of all board members, including the permanent board member. Yeah, Mark, I think you go to the chapter incorrectly, so I requested the change. Oh, but basically oh good. on the wording, because okay. we do allow two elected board members from a single company. Uh, so uh, the question in 77, the number of elected board members affiliated with one company must be 50% or less, mm -hmm. which means that uh, up of five, you can easily have two. Uh, the problem we've been discussing in previous years and maybe this year too is that for Cloud Bees, with Kosaki being still affiliated with Cloud Bees, it means that uh, there is, and Kosaki being de facto not active in the Jenkins community unless a big escalation happens, it means that uh, Cloud Bees might have only one uh, uh, representative apart from Kiki. So this is why I requested the change because if you are trying to address that, uh, your current proposed wording doesn't really change it. So, so I, I, I think I need to see your proposed change then, or like help me with that. I it's didn't it's propose a change. I just uh, said that the current one doesn't work. And basically my proposal, if you open conversation, okay. my proposal would be to keep um, 
So if you really want to resolve this conundrum and have, let's say, two employees, so before that, we had two cases, well, one case when Mark and me we were unable to be on the board, and at that point, Mark got the uh, second uh, number of votes, but wouldn't be able to join. Uh, so my proposal would be instead of changing quoting, uh, changing what actually affiliation means. Because one could argue is even if KK is advisor for Cloud Bees, KK doesn't actively engage, uh, let's say, in product strategy and in defending this product strategy. At least this is my perception of current KK's role in, inside Cloud Bees. I'm not 100% sure. That's also uh, my perception. So, uh, yeah, so if you are to change something, my proposal would be to become clear what actually affiliation means. Because I basically, uh, when organizing first elections with Tracy and then second elections, we took the most strict possible rule. If the person is affiliated, they are affiliated. So for example, if they are a major shareholder or if they uh, have a contract with cash flow with the company, then they are affiliated. Uh, we could reconsider that. And I think that we can see that that is more legitimate that allowing uh, basically three people from a single company, which would constitute 60%, which would diminish uh, the neutrality statements. So I think, I think we did find out there are no neutrality statements. But um, I, I agree. I don't think Koske is considered affiliated officially anymore. Um, he is listed as an advisor on LinkedIn, but the CloudBees website doesn't mention him, and Wikipedia doesn't mention him. You know, his 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 connection to the company is minor at best. So I have I have a little bit of concerns with the word associated um, as well. But I also don't know if this needs to be done. Uh, before the election this year, because I don't think it changes who's got nominated. Uh, yeah, my preference would be to change it after the election too, because uh, the ship for this election is sailed. And if we change it now, unless uh, there is a desperate need to do that, uh, it would smell. Um, taking the list of nominations right now, I do not see a particular need to change that, to be honest. But we need to do confirmations, and before that, uh, and after that, we can decide accordingly. Uh, but uh, yeah, so there are two questions. Firstly, when we do change it, and what we change. Uh, so I do not want to block a change if it's needed to have a healthy board. Uh, but yeah, right now I'm not convinced that we do it. I have to do it now. Okay, so given given the voice that I'm hearing both from Gavin and from Oleg, that your your perception based on the list of nominees that was shared is that we may not need this change immediately. Uh, I I think I'm I'm okay with that. I'm a little concerned about it, but it's it's a valid point. Um, mm -hmm. What I think I'm hearing then is we vet the nominees over the course of the next few days, confirm that the nominees accept the nomination and then proceed from there. And we can then revisit this question after the election's complete, because your point is, hey, this is not a, an urgent thing in terms of direct impact on current election. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree, though. I, I don't think Costco should be considered a blocking, blocking new board members. But I also want to keep it fair and for the future. Yes, yeah, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure. For me, yeah. the challenge there is Kosuke probably, I don't know his, his, his shareholdings in CloudBees. He is listed as an advisor. And so as an advisor, that might be a use of the word affiliated. So, uh, he's where, not so uh, when we were doing uh, the elections in 2020, if I recall correctly, uh, or 2019, I reached out to a few people uh, in CloudBees. Um, and basically my information was that even after Kiki stepped down, uh, he has a fl cash flow with the company. And, and uh, that is something I have not audited, right? I don't know if he's received. Uh, yeah, so I cannot confirm whether it's still a case. Right, and, and I, uh, that's not, um, 
that was that was a level of detail that I didn't want to. I mean, we could change the word affiliated with to employed by, and and there's a there's a term for employment that probably he is not considered an employee of Cloudbees since uh, I don't see him listed as an employee of Cloudbees when yeah, I look at I the internal system. I would consider advisory role as employer because we have so many advisors, we have so many advisory board members uh, here and there. Um, I'm actually curious where you're seeing he's actually, other than his LinkedIn, I don't see him being listed as an advisor anywhere anymore. Oh, I thought it was on the Wikipedia page that for Kosuke. Well, Wikipedia is probably not a great reference. Yeah. So maybe one of the ways is for, actually for Marco Basel to reach out to Cloudbees folks and verify the current status. Yeah, I can, I can certainly so do that. Because it would be a, one of the straightforward ways. I mean, if so, if tell me tell me then about the threshold that Oleg you and Gavin you would set for the use of the verb affiliated in this case. If he is receiving funds from Cloudbees, is that affiliated? If he is titled an advisor, is that by definition affiliated, or is it? Does there need to be? If he's a majority shareholder, is or if he's a, if he has a significant, probably not a majority shareholder. If he has a significant mm -hmm. shareholding, is that considered affiliated? I'm hoping that the problem solves itself, and I don't have to make that distinction. Like if okay. he says I am not involved at all with Cloudbees, we don't need to make that distinction. If he says I am, you know, making thousands of dollars off Cloudbees every day, we're like, Meh, we're not going to make the distinction. You're still considered affiliated, well, right? But anything in between, then we can discuss. Yeah. So personally, right. I would take a definition from another open source institution so that we don't have to invent our own. But yeah, my uh, ballpark would be that if he is employed, obviously it's affiliation. Right. Uh, whether as a contractor or as a permanent employee, doesn't matter. And uh, secondly, whether if he is a major shareholder, but even that, uh, you would have to answer what is major. <laughs> so yeah, and I don't know that that's that I I doubt that there's any public location where shareholder partitions are dis disclosed for Cloudbees. So I'm not sure I can obtain that information no, in any cannot. public manner. I mean, I'm also concerned because if we're getting too um, specific about the rules, I think Oleg and I still considered affiliated in some way with Cloudbees, right? We are ex-employees. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember if we have stock. I don't think they went public and have stock. But I mean, the, the definition of the word affiliate is really weird in this a sentence, because, but it is by definition, and I had to look it up repeatedly, it's officially attached or connect a person to an organization. And I don't really know what that means. So I would say, ask Koske what his role is at Cloudbees that he's willing to make, uh, or ask Cloudbees what their statement is if they're saying he's just like a token person on the board i'd be okay with calling it he's not affiliated if he's like an active board member that actually shapes a company then i would say he's affiliated and i think at that point we can try to you know get the wording right i don't think mark likes this sentence Where um if we have a minute i wanted to address the changes that oleg requested on this pull request so if we have some time I have I have some responses to that i so, can stick around for a bit yeah, yeah so is have, um, oleg do you have time he said yes okay great so basil go ahead right i wanted to address the point that mark's pull request doesn't change the situation for Cloudbees. And if you read the wording of Mark's pull request, mm. specifically wrote that uh, that the number of elected board members has to be 50% or less. So that ex so if Kasuke has a permanent seat, then mm. he's not an elected board member. And so the second half of Oleg's Oh, right. that you would need to allow for three members from a single company or 60% of the board. Well, Mark's pull request does in fact allow for that, given that Mark's pull request 
the wording around the 50% is strictly for elected board members and not appointed. So extrapolating the elected and appointed board members together, that would allow for 60% to be yeah. from a single company. You got it uh, right. Mm, it's me who didn't uh, carefully read uh, the elected part. So yeah, in this case, of course, uh, it would work uh, for having uh, uh, three people affiliated with Cloud Bees, uh, including Kiki, with, let's say, loose affiliation. Um, I, so I my was... point is that the changes that were requested were based on a misunderstanding rather than... Okay, so definitely I need to retract uh, a block income. Uh, yeah, because I definitely misunderstood. Uh, it, well, it's even uh, written in the title. Uh, but it's no problem. I just wanted to make sure that we were all. Uh, I, we, I missed it. I missed it too. I didn't read. I mean, that that does that was going to be my point. Was like, do we want to make special rules for Koske as the the dictator for life type thing? Um, was going to be like that would be the the more beneficial way of saying to people because i didn't want to say company could take over but uh, i also Costco is kind of a special case so mm -hmm. i like this wording um i would still like to wait to hear before we merge it or change the actual process i would like to hear back from the, the current nominees if all the current nominees say no then we might need to merge this and find some more nominees mm -hmm. but i do want to stick with the 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 procedure we laid out last month as this is the this is what we're adopting for this Thanks. election period and what would be the reason for that for waiting right well because we've already started the process i don't want to change the process in the middle of the process okay yeah, plus let's agree that if you talk about a board election process change it's not something that can be decided just on the governance meeting call so one would uh, rather need to start uh, to vote in the mailing list, etc. Then we would need to give some time to give feedback. So let's say one. Uh, even that at this point creates some problems for the timeline, if I understand correctly. So you know, I do not feel strongly that. So if we need to, to maintain a healthy board. I would rather prioritize uh, doing a change, uh, a delaying election if needed, then. But yeah, I, if you can have uh, a healthy board without doing changes at the last moment, uh, we can do that. I mean, there's um, a very good chance looking at the list of nominees that everyone will say no. Uh, if that's the case, we will revisit this and re we get some new nominations. Mm -hmm. um, and. I would say that would be something we can do this week if all the people say no, um, but we'll just have to delay. I mean, the, the officers will get nom or elected anyways. That's going through. The board will have to be revisited. And if we don't, if we don't have our nominees don't accept, we're going to have to go through the process anyways. And at that point, I think is the right time to get this changed. Okay. Yeah. And I think, I think I'm okay with that. That's, I am okay with that. I shouldn't say I think I am. Let's be very explicit. I am okay with that. I think that is a good, a good description. So guiding me on, I had intentionally used this word elected specifically for the, the reasons that Basel noted, because mm -hmm. Kosuke, because the permanent board member is a special case, right? He yeah. really is a, a very special case. I, I like your wording. Okay. Um, I agree with Oleg. It probably shouldn't be the five of us on this call making this call. Um, I don't think the, I really, I mean, if you take a look at the U.S. elections, I don't think the U.S. Gov, uh, elections should be deciding the rules for their own elections. It should be much broader than that. So I agree with Oleg that this should be a discussion on the dev mail list. I can't imagine people are going to have issues with it as long as we make sure that people understand the difference between number of board members versus number of elected board members. Um, but I don't think the board's going to have an issue with it or the dev list is going to have an issue with it, but it shouldn't be just the five of us making the decision. Okay, so fair point. So for, for example, in the current state, I would be perfectly okay with doing this change. But imagine uh, one month later, Kiki decides that he is no longer a fan of uh, distributed testing and he returns back to CloudBees, let's say, as 
let's say, new CTO of the company. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have a problem after that? Yes, we do. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is something to keep in mind, and this is why I would rather go through the uh, level of affiliation than uh, through making PK an exception. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, again, uh, if we can, uh, do this election cycle without that, it's my yeah. preference. Um, I would, though, however, like to get actual official cl clarification, even if it's in... Uh... Uh, an email to the board from CloudBees saying that uh, Costco is no longer uh, directly affiliated. Like if we don't have to make it public, they don't have to make a public statement, but if they could email the board and saying, uh, this is his role and this is his affiliation, then we don't even have to change the document because that would handle uh, this, this scenario where he's like in name affiliated only and not actual day to day. And if that changes, then this can, you know, the affiliation threshold can take effect. Yeah, it works yeah. for me. I'm just not sure that that, I, that again, the cloud if they say marketing yes. organization is going to accept my my saying yes. Let's disclose whatever thing there. I, I don't know. It's, I know, but they can. Question. If you if you fired off an email, it can. Be, I don't think it should be marketing. I think it should be higher up and just say, hey, uh, Jenkins board is a little concerned about uh, a Costco's affiliation. Can you clarify his affiliation to the board? It doesn't have to be a full you know public broadcast uh and then we have that in writing so that if it does change that's fine i think his affiliation is if if anything still in name only i don't think it's anything more and then that solves this problem if they are not comfortable with us then we'll have to revisit this but i'm always of the opinion we might as well get it done right before we change the process i mean i could email if you rather, I can email someone from CloudBees. Oh no, no, that's it's. I think it's a much easier process, Gavin. If I make that, if I ask that yeah. question, yeah. They, 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 then they can always tell me. They can tell me blunt things if they need to, and say, "Mark, yeah. you're not allowed to say the following five things when you, yeah. when you do that." Yeah, that's, no, totally. But like not, I said, it doesn't have to be public. I think I think emailing right. the board is good enough. I mean, it's kind of shady being like, oh, no, it's fine. We, we've had a discussion. But that is part of the board is there are some sensitive things that the right. board should there deal with. There are topics so. that the board discusses that are private. They really yeah. are. That's, yeah. that's intentional. And if, if it turn, comes back that he's affiliated, and then we can revisit this topic. But I do think you can also submit this to the dev mail list at the same time, mm -hmm. um, not for this election. Um, but if for whatever reason the nominations come back saying no, then we'll have already started this process. Like I don't, I think you can do it in parallel without doing it in waterfall. Zero. All right. I, I'll I'll do that. That I can do. Okay. Anything else on the elections topic? No. Okay. Yeah, maybe right. one thing, uh, do we accept a risk of not having elections? So let's say we have two candidates for the board who accepted the nomination. Uh, what do we do in this case? Do we want, do and I find uh, three candidates to have an election or we, do we just proceed without an election then? In the I past, think... our pattern was to proceed without an election. If we have just enough candidates, the, the election is complete. Gavin, your yeah. comment? That's what I was about to say, yeah. I think I, I haven't seen anything in all the stuff I've read recently about requiring an election even as only two candidates. I don't think it was ever thought something that people thought up, but. Yeah, it yeah. certainly in the elections in which I just participated in the United States when there was only one candidate, they would put the candidate on the ballot and that was it, right? We were done. There was, it was only because the ballot needed a space for that. They would put it in yeah. and we were done. It, it was That's obvious no, who was going to Not how win. it's done in Russia. <laughs> okay. I, we are not going to go there, Oleg, because we could have a lot okay. of fun with that conversation. <laughs> and some of us have to get back to work because it's the middle of the day. Exactly. Wow. Thank you very much. Any yeah. other time? Are you okay if we just defer CDF topics and forum and community topics to another time, given our schedule? I don't have any CDF updates since the last time. Um, I think it's worth throwing the mail in this link in the forum topics because I, or not the mail in this, the newsletter link. I think every week we should 
I'm very excited that the uh, the mail the newsletter has started. Um, oh, good. Uh, I actually told the the Matrix guy I met that we are stealing. We're inspired by their monthly mailing list because I thought it was a really good idea. I will insert it there. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much. End of meeting. Meeting will be recorded. Oh, whoops, sorry. I missed a bunch of, of chat. Yeah, it's fine. I'd handle okay. it. Bless you. Thank you very much. It's very kind of you. All right.